Section One of Medea by Euripides. The scene represents the front of Medea's house in Corinth. A road to the right leads towards the royal castle, one on the left to the harbour. The nurse is discovered alone. Would God no Argo e'er had winged the seas to Colchis through the blue Symplegades? No shaft of riven pine in Pelion's glen shaped that first oar blade in the hands of men valiant, who won to save King Peleus' vow the fleece all golden. Never then, I trow, mine own princess, her spirit wounded sore with love of Jason, to the encastled shore had sailed of old Iolcus. Never wrought the daughters of King Peleus, knowing not to spill their father's life, nor fled in fear, hunted for that fierce sin, to Corinth here with Jason and her babes. This folk at need stood friend to her, and she in word and deed served always Jason. Surely this doth bind through all ill days the hurts of humankind, when man and woman in one music move. But now the world is angry, and true love sick as with poison. Jason doth forsake my mistress and his own two sons to make his couch in a king's chamber. He must wed, wed with this Creon's child, who now is head and chief of Corinth. Wherefore sore betrayed, Medea calleth up the oath they made, they too, and wakes the clasped hands again, the troth surpassing speech, and cries amain on God in heaven to mark the end, and how Jason hath paid his debt. All fasting now and cold, her body yielded up to pain, her days a waste of weeping she hath lain since first she knew that he was false. Her eyes are lifted not, and all her visage lies in the dust. If friends will speak, she hears no more than some dead rock or wave that beats the shore. Only the white throat in a sudden shame may writhe, and all alone she moans the name of father and land and home. Forsook that day for this man's sake who casteth her away, not to be quite shut out from home. Alas, she knoweth now how rare a thing that was. Methinks she hath a dread, not joy, to see her children near. Tis this that maketh me most tremble, lest she do I know not what. Her heart is no light thing, and uses not to brook much wrong. I know that woman, ay, and dread her. Will she creep alone to die bleeding in that old room where still is laid Lord Jason's bed? She hath for that a blade made keen. Or slay the bridegroom and the king, and win herself God knows what dire a thing. Tis a fell spirit. Few, I ween, shall stir her hate unscathed, or lightly humble her. <laughs> Tis the children from their games again, rested and gay, and all their mother's pain forgotten. Young lives ever turn from gloom. The children and their attendant come in. Thou ancient treasure of my lady's room, what makest thou here before the gates alone, and always turning on thy lips some moan of old mischances? Will our mistress be content this long time to be left by thee? Grey god of Jason's children, a good thrall hath his own grief, if any hurt befall his masters. Ay, it holds one's heart. Meseems I have strayed out so deep in evil dreams, I long to rest me here alone, and cry Medea's wrongs to this still earth and sky. How? Are the tears yet running in her eyes? "'Twere good to be like thee. "'Her sorrow lies scarce wakened yet, "'not half its perils wrought. "'Mad spirit! "'If a man may speak his thought of masters mad, "'and nothing in her ears has sounded yet "'of her last cause for tears.' "'He moves towards the house, "'but the nurse checks him. "'What cause, old man? "'Nay, grudge me not one word. "'Tis nothing. "'Best forget what thou hast heard. Nay, housemaid, by thy beard, hold it not hid from me. I will keep silence, if thou bid. I heard an old man talking. 
where he sate at draughts in the sun beside the fountain gate, and never thought of me there standing still beside him. And he said, "'Twas Creon's will, being lord of all this land, that she be sent, and with her her two sons, to banishment. Maybe tis all false. For myself, I know no further, and I would it were not so. Jason will never bear it. His own sons, banished. However hot his anger runs against their mother. Old love burneth low when new love wakes, men say. He is not now husband nor father here, nor any kin. But this is ruin. New waves breaking in to wreck us ere we are righted from the old. Well, hold thy peace. Our mistress will be told all in good time. Speak thou no word hereof. My babes, what think ye of your father's love? God curse him not, he is my master still. But, oh, to them that loved him, tis an ill friend. And what man on earth is different? How? Hast thou lived all these years, and learned but now that every man more loveth his own head than other men's? He dreameth of the bed of this new bride, and thinks not of his sons. Go, run into the house, my little ones. All will end happily. Keep them apart. Let not their mother meet them while her heart is darkened. Yesternight I saw a flame stand in her eye, as though she hated them, and would I know not what. For sure her wrath will never turn nor slumber till she hath... Go, and if some must suffer, may it be not we who love her, but some enemy. Within. O oh, shame and pain! O oh, woe is me! Would I could die in my misery! The children and the attendant go in. Ah, children, hark! She moves again her frozen heart, her sleeping wrath. In quick, and never cross her path, nor rouse that dark eye in its pain, that fell sea spirit and the dire spring of a will untaught, unbowed. Quick now, methinks this weeping cloud hath in its heart some thunder fire, slow gathering, that must flash ere long. I know not how, for ill or well, it turns, this uncontrollable, tempestuous spirit, blind with wrong. Within. Have I not suffered? Doth it call no tears? Ha! Huh. Ye beside the wall, unfathered children, God hate you as I am hated, and him too that gat you, and this house and all. For pity, what have they to do, babes, with their father's sin? Why call thy curse on these? Ah, children, all these days my bosom bleeds for you. Rude are the wills of princes, yea, prevailing alway, seldom crossed. On fitful winds their moods are tossed. Tis best men tread the equal way. Ay, not with glory, but with peace, may the long summers find me crowned. For gentleness, her very sound is magic, and her usages, all wholesome. But the fiercely great hath little music on his road, and falleth when the hand of God shall move, most deep and desolate. During the last words, the leader of the chorus has entered. Other women follow her. I heard a voice and a moan, a voice of the eastern seas. Hath she found not yet her ease? Speak, O aged one, for I stood afar at the gate, and there came from within a cry, and wailing desolate, Ah, no more joy have I, for the griefs this house doth see, and the love it hath wrought in me. There is no house, tis gone. The Lord seeketh a prouder bed, and she wastes in her chamber, and not one word will hear of care or charity. Within. O oh, Zeus, O oh, earth, O oh, light, will the fire not stab my brain? What profit hath living? Oh, shall I not lift the slow yoke, and let the life go? as a beast out in the night to lie and be rid of pain. O, o Zeus, o, o Earth, o Light, 
the cry of bride forlorn heard ye, and wailing born of lost delight. Why weariest thou this day, wild heart, for the bed abhorred, the cold bed in the clay? Death cometh though no man pray, ungarlanded, unadored, call him not thou. If another's arms be now where thine have been, on his head be the sin, rend not thy brow. All that thou sufferest, God seeth. O, oh, not so sore, waste, nor weep for the breast that was thine of yore. Or then, virgin of righteousness, virgin of hallowed troth, ye marked me when with an oath I bound him. Mark no less that oath's end. Give me to see him and his bride, who sought my grief when I wronged her not, broken in misery and all her house. O oh God, my mother's home, and the dim shore that I left for him, and the voice of my brother's blood. O oh, wild words! Did ye hear her cry to them that God man's face forsworn Themis and Zeus? This wrath new born shall make mad workings ere it die. Would she but come to seek our faces that love her well, and take to her heart the spell of words that speak? Alas for the heavy hate and anger that burneth ever! Would it but now abate? Ah, God, I love her yet. And surely my love's endeavor shall fail not here. Go, from that chamber drear, forth to the day, lead her, and say, O oh, say, that we love her dear. Go, lest her hand be hard on the innocent. Ah, let be, for her grief moves hitherward like an angry sea. That will I, though what words of mine or love shall move her? Let them lie with the old lost labours. Yet her eye, know ye the eyes of the wild kind, the lion flash that guards their brood. So look she now, if any thrall speak comfort, or draw near at all my mistress in her evil mood. The nurse goes into the house. Alas, the bold, blithe bards of old, that all for joy their music made for feasts and dancing manifold, that life might listen and be glad. But all the darkness and the wrong, quick deaths and dim heart-aching things, would no man ease them with a song, or music of a thousand strings? Then song has served us in our need. What profit, o'er the banquet's swell, that lingering cry that none may heed, the feast hath filled them. All is well. I heard a song, but it comes no more, Where the tears ran over, A keen cry, but tired, tired, A woman's cry for her heart's desired, For a traitor's kiss and a lost lover. But a prayer, methinks, yet riseth sore to God, To faith, God's ancient daughter, the faith that over sundering seas drew her to Hellas, and the breeze of midnight shivered, and the door closed of the salt unsounded water. During the last words, Medea has come out from the house. Women of Corinth, I am come to show my face, lest ye despise me. For I know some head stand high and fail not, even at night alone far less like this in all men's sight. And we, who study not our wayfarings, but feel and cry, oh, we are drifting things and evil. For what truth is in men's eyes, which search no heart, but in a flash despise a strange face, shuddering back from one that ne'er hath wronged them? Sure, Far comers anywhere I know must bow them and be gentle. Nay, a Greek himself men praise not, who always should seek his own will wrecking not. But I, this thing undreamed of, 
sudden from on high hath sapped my soul. I dazzle where I stand, the cup of life shattered in my hand, longing to die. O oh, friends, he, even he, whom to know well was all the world to me, the man I loved hath proved most evil. O oh, of all things upon earth that bleed and grow, a herb most bruised is woman. We must pay our store of gold, hoarded for that one day, to buy us some man's love. And, lo, they bring a master of our flesh. There comes the sting of the whole shame. And then the jeopardy for good or ill, what shall that master be? Reject she cannot. And if he but stays his suit, tis shame on all that woman's days. So thrown amid new laws, new places, why, tis magic she must have, or prophecy. Home never taught her that. How best to guide toward peace this thing that sleepeth at her side. And she who, labouring long, shall find some way whereby her lord may bear with her, nor fray his yoke too fiercely, blessed is the breath that woman draws. Else let her pray for death. Her lord, if he be wearied of the face within doors, gets him forth. Some merrier place will ease his heart. But she waits on, her whole vision enchained on a single soul. And then, forsooth, tis they that face the call of war, while we sit sheltered, hid from all peril. False mocking! Sooner would I stand three times to face their battles, shield in hand, than bear one child. But peace! There cannot be ever the same tale told of thee and me. Thou hast this city, and thy father's home, and joy of friends, and hope in days to come. But I, being cityless, am cast aside by him that wedded me, a savage bride, one in far seas and left, no mother near, no brother, not one kinsman anywhere for harbour in this storm. Therefore of thee I ask one thing. If chance yet ope to me some path, if even now my hand can win strength to requite this Jason for his sin, betray me not. Oh, in all things but this I know how full of fears a woman is, and faint at need, and shrinking from the light of battle. But once spoil her of her right in man's love, and there moves, I warn thee well, no bloodier spirit between heaven and hell. I will betray thee not. It is but just, thou smite him. And that weeping in the dust, and stormy tears, how should I blame them? Stay, tis Creon, lord of Corinth, makes his way hither, and bears, methinks, some word of weight. Enter from the right Creon, the king, with armed attendants. Thou woman, sullen-eyed and hot with hate against thy lord, Medea, I here command that thou and thy two children from this land go forth to banishment. Make no delay, seeing ourselves, the king, are come this day to see our charge fulfilled, nor shall again look homeward ere we have led thy children twain, and thee, beyond our realm's last boundary. Lost! Lost! Mine haters at the helm with sail flung free pursuing, and for us no beach nor shore in the endless waters. Yet, though stricken sore, I still will ask thee, for what crime, what thing unlawful wilt thou cast me out, O king? What crime? I fear thee, woman, little need to cloak my reasons lest thou work some deed of darkness on my child, and in that fear reasons enough have part. Thou comest here, 
a wise woman confessed and full of lore in unknown ways of evil thou art sore in heart being parted from thy lover's arms and more thou hast made menace so the alarms but now have reached mine ear on bride and groom and him who gave the bride to work thy doom of vengeance which ere yet it be too late i sweep aside i choose to earn thine hate of set will now not polter with the mood of mercy and hereafter weep in blood tis not the first nor second time o king that fame hath hurt me and come nigh to bring my ruin how can any man whose eyes are wholesome seek to rear his children wise beyond men's wont much helplessness in arts of common life and in their townsmen's hearts envy deep set so much their learning brings come unto fools with knowledge of new things they deem it vanity not knowledge i and men that erst for wisdom were held high feel thee a thorn to fret them privily held higher than they so hath it been with me a wise woman i am and for that sin to divers ill names men would pen me in a seed of strife an eastern dreamer one of brand not theirs one hard to play upon <laughs> i am not so wondrous wise and now to thee i am terrible what fearest thou what dire need do i tread so proud a path <laughs> fear me not thou that i should brave the wrath of princes thou what hast thou ever done to wrong me granted thine own child to one whom thy soul chose ah him out of my heart i hate but thou meseems hast done thy part not ill and for thine house's happiness i hold no grudge go marry and god bless your issues only suffer me to rest somewhere within this land though sore oppressed i will be still knowing mine own defeat thy words be gentle but i fear me yet lest even now they creep some wickedness deep hid within thee and for that the less i trust thee now than ere these words began a woman quick of wrath i or a man is easier watching than the cold and still up straight and find thy road mock not my will with words this doom is past beyond recall nor all i craft shall help thee being with all my manifest foe to linger at my side suddenly throwing herself down and clinging to creon oh by thy knees by that new wedded bride tis waste of words thou shalt not weaken me wilt hunt me spurn me when i kneel to thee tis mine own house that kneels to me not thou home my lost home how i desire thee now and i mine and my child beyond all things o oh, loves of man what curse is on your wings blessing or curse tis as their chances flow remember zeus the cause of all this woe oh rid me of my pains up get thee gone what would i with thy pains i have mine own up oh for god my soldiers here shall fling not that not that i do but pray o king thou wilt not i must face the harsher task i accept mine exile tis not that i ask why then so wild why clinging to mine hand rising for one day only leave me in thy land at peace to find some counsel ere the strain of exile fall some comfort for these twain mine innocents since others take no thought it seems to save the babes that they begot ah oh, thou wilt pity them thou also art a father thou hast somewhere still a heart that feels i reck not of myself tis they that break me fallen upon so dire a day mine is no tyrant's mood ay many a time ere this my tenderness hath marred the chime of wisest counsels and i know that now i do mere folly 
But so be it, thou shalt have this grace. But this I warn thee clear, if once the morrow's sunlight finds thee here within my borders, thee, O child of thine, thou diest. Of this judgment not a line shall waver nor abate. So linger on, if thou needst must, till the next risen sun. No further. In one day there scarce can be those perils wrought, whose dread yet haunteth me. Exit Creon with his suit. O oh, woman, woman, woman of sorrow, where wilt thou turn and flee? and flee? What town shall be thine to-morrow? What land of all lands that be? What door of a strange man's home? Yea, God hath hunted thee, Medea, Forth to the foam of a trackless sea. Defeat on every side. What else? But, oh, not here the end is, think it not. I know for bride and groom one battle yet untried, And goodly pains for him that gave the bride. <laughs> Dost dream I would have grovelled to this man, Save that I won mine end and shaped my plan for merry deeds? My lips had never deigned speak word with him, my flesh be never stained with touching. O fool, O triple fool! It lay so plain for him to kill my whole essay by exile swift. <laughs> and lo, he sets me free this one long day, wherein mine haters three shall lie here dead, the father and the bride and husband, mine! not hers. Oh, I have tried so many thoughts of murder to my turn, I know not which best likes me. Shall I burn their house with fire? Or, stealing past unseen to Jason's bed, I have a blade made keen for that, stab breast to breast that wedded pair. Good, but for one thing. When I am taken there and killed, they will laugh loud who hate me. Nay, I love the old way best, the simple way of poison, where we too are strong as men. Ah, me! And they being dead, what place shall hold me then? What friend shall rise with land and violet, And trusty doors to shelter from their hate this flesh? None anywhere. A little more I needs must wait, And if there ope some door of refuge, Some strong tower to shield me, good. In craft and darkness I will hunt this blood. Else if mine hour be come and no hope nigh, then sword in hand, full-willed and sure to die, I yet will live to slay them. I will wend, manlike, their road of daring to the end. So help me, she who of all gods hath been the best to me, of all my chosen queen and helpmate, Hecate, who dwells apart, the flame of flame in my fire's inmost heart, for all their strength, they shall not stab my soul and laugh thereafter. Dark and full of dole their bridal feast shall be, most dark the day they joined their hands and hunted me away. Awake thee now, Medea. Whatso plot thou hast, or cunning, strive and falter not. On to the peril point. Now comes the strain of daring. Shall they trample thee again? How? And with Hellas laughing o'er thy fall, While this thief's daughter weds, And weds with all Jason? A true king was thy father, Yea, and born of the ancient son. Thou knowest the way, And God hath made thee woman, Things most vain for help, But wondrous in the paths of pain. Medea goes into the house. Back streams the wave on the ever-running river. Life, life is changed, and the laws of it o'er trod. Man shall be the slave.
the affrighted, the low liver. Man hath forgotten God. And woman, yea, woman, shall be terrible in story. The tales, too, me seemeth, shall be other than of yore. For a fear there is that cometh out of woman, and a glory, and the hard-hating voices shall encompass her no more. The old bards shall cease, and their memory that lingers, of frail brides and faithless, shall be shriveled as with fire. For they loved us not, nor knew us, and our lips were dumb, our fingers could not wake the secret of the lyre. Else, else, O oh God the singer, I had sung amid their rages, a long tale of man and his deeds for good and ill. But the old world knoweth, tis the speech of all his ages. Man's wrong and ours, he knoweth and is still. Forth from thy father's home thou camest, O heart of fire, to the dark blue rocks, to the clashing foam, to the seas of thy desire till the dark blue bar was crossed, and lo, by an alien river standing, thy lover lost, void armed for ever. Forth yet again, O lowest of landless women, a ranger of desolate ways, thou goest from the walls of the stranger. And the great oath waxeth weak, and Ruth, as a thing outstriven, is fled, fled from the shores of the greek away on the winds of heaven dark is the house afar where an old king called thee daughter all that was once thy star in stormy water dark and low in the nearer house that was sworn to love thee another queenlier dearer is thrown at above thee Enter from the right, Jason. Oft have I seen in other days than these How a dark temper maketh maladies No friend can heal. T'was easy to have kept both land and home. It needed but to accept unstrivingly The pleasure of our lords. But thou, for mere delight in stormy words, Wilt lose all. Now thy speech provokes not me. Rail on. Of all mankind let Jason be most evil. None shall check thee. But for these dark threats cast out against the majesties of Corinth, count as various gain thy path of exile. I myself, when princely wrath was hot against thee, strove with all good will to appease the wrath, and wished to keep thee still beside me. But thy mouth would never stay from vanity, blaspheming night and day our masters. Therefore thou shalt fly the land. Yet even so I will not hold my hand from succoring mine own people. Here am I to help thee, woman, pondering heedfully thy new state, for I would not have thee flung provisionless away, I and the young children as well, nor lacking aught that will of mine can bring thee. Many a lesser ill hangs on the heels of exile. And though thou hate me, dream not that my heart can know or fashion aught of angry will to thee evil most evil since thou grantest me that comfort the worst weapon left me now to smite a coward thou comest to me thou mine enemy oh say how call ye this to face and smile the comrade whom his kiss betrayed scorn insult courage none of these tis but of all man's inward sicknesses the vilest that he knoweth not of shame nor pity yet i praise him that he came to me it shall bring comfort once to clear my heart on thee and thou shalt wince to hear i will begin with that twixt me and thee that first befell I saved thee, I saved thee. Let thine own Greeks be witness, every one that sailed on Argo. Saved thee, sent alone to yoke with yokes the bulls of fiery breath, and sow that acre of the lords of death. And mine own ancient serpent, 
who did keep the golden fleece, the eyes that knew not sleep, and shining coils. Him also did I smite dead for thy sake, and lifted up the light that bade thee live. Myself, uncounselled, stole forth from father and from home, and fled where dark Iolcus under Pelion lies with thee. O oh, single-hearted more than wise! I murdered Peleus, yea, in agony, by his own daughter's hands, for sake of thee. I swept their house like war. And hast thou then accepted all, O oh, evil, yet again, and cast me off, and taken thee for bride another? And with children at thy side? One could forgive a childless man. But no, I have borne thee children. Is sworn faith so low and weak a thing? I understand it not. Are the old gods dead? Are the old laws forgot and new laws made? Since not my passioning but thine own heart doth cry thee for a thing forsworn. She catches sight of her own hand, which she has thrown out to denounce him. Poor! Poor right hand of mine, whom he did cling to, and these knees so cravingly, we are unclean, thou and I. We have caught the stain of bad men's flesh, and dreamed our dreams in vain. Thou comest to befriend me. Give me, then, thy counsel. Tis not that I dream again for good from thee, but questioned thou wilt show the viler. Say, now whither shall I go? Back to my father? Him I did betray, and all his land when we two fled away? To those poor Peliad maids? For them twere good to take me in, who spilled their father's blood. Ay, so my whole life stands. There were at home who loved me well, to them I am become a curse. And the first friends who sheltered me, whom most I should have spared, to pleasure thee I have turned to foes. Oh, therefore hast thou laid my crown upon me, blessed of many a maid in Hellas, now I have won what all did crave. Thee, the world-wandered lover and the brave, who this day looks and sees me banished, thrown away with these two babes, all all alone. O oh, merry mocking when the lamps are red! Where go the bridegroom's babes to beg their bread in exile, and the woman who gave all to save him? O oh, great God! Shall gold withal bear thy clear mark to sift the base and fine, and o'er man's living visage runs no sign to show the lie within, ere all too late dire and beyond all healing is the hate when hearts that loved are turned to enmity in speech at least meseemeth i must be not evil but as some old pilot goes furled to his sail's last edge when danger blows too fiery run before the wind and swell woman of thy loud storms and thus I tell my tale, since thou wilt build so wondrous high thy deeds of service in my jeopardy, to all my crew and quest I know but one saviour, of gods or mortals, one alone, the Cyprian. Oh, thou hast both brain and wit, yet underneath, nay, all the tale of it were graceless telling. How sheer love, a fire of poison shafts, compelled thee with desire to save me. But enough, I will not score that count too close. Twas good help, and therefore I give thee thanks. However the help was wrought, howbeit in my deliverance thou hast got far more than given. A good Greek land hath been thy lasting home, not Barbary. Thou hast seen our ordered life and justice and the long, still grasp of law not changing with the strong man's pleasure. Then all Hellas far and near hath learned thy wisdom, and in every ear thy fame is. 
had thy days run by unseen on that last edge of the world where then had been the story of great medea thou and i what worth to us were treasures heap it high in rich king's rooms what worth a voice of gold more sweet than ever rang from orpheus old unless our deeds have glory speak i so touching the quest i wrought thyself did throw the challenge down next for thy cavilling of wrath at mine alliance with a king here thou shalt see i both was wise and free from touch of passion and a friend to thee most potent and my children nay be still when first i stood in corinth clogged with ill for many a desperate mischance what bliss could i that day have dreamed of like to this to wed with a king's daughter i exiled and beggared not what makes thy passion wild from loathing of thy bed not overfraught with love for this new bride not that i sought to upbuild mine house with offspring tis enough what thou hast borne i make no word thereof but first and greatest that we all might dwell in a fair house and want not knowing well that poor men have no friends but far and near shutting and silence next i sought to rear our sons in nurture worthy of my race and raising brethren to them in one place join both my houses and be all from now prince-like and happy what more need hast thou of children and for me it serves my star to link in strength the children that now are with those that shall be have i counselled ill not thine own self would say it couldst thou still one hour thy jealous flesh <laughs> tis ever so who looks for more in women when the flow of love runs plain why all the world is fair but once there falls some ill chance anywhere to balk that thirst down in swift hate are trod men's dearest aims and noblest would to god we mortals by some other seed could raise our fruits and no blind women block our ways then had there been no curse to wreck mankind lord jason very subtly hast thou twined thy speech but yet though all athwart thy will I speak. This is not well thou dost, but ill, betraying her who loved thee and was true. Surely I have my thoughts, and not a few have held me strange. To me it seemeth when a crafty tongue is given to evil men, tis like to wreck, not help them. Their own brain tempts them with lies to dare and dare again, till no man hath enough of subtlety. As thou, be not so seeming fair to me, nor deft of speech. One word will make thee fall. Would thou not false, t'was thine to tell me all, and charge me help thy marriage path, as I did love thee? not befool me with a lie an easy task had that been i am thou a loving aid who canst not even now still that loud heart that surges like the tide that moved thee not thine old barbarian bride the dog out of the east who loved thee sore she grew grey-haired she served thy pride no more now understand for once the girl to me is nothing in this web of sovereignty i hold I do but seek to save even yet thee, and for brethren to our sons beget young kings, to prosper all our lives again. God shelter me from prosperous days of pain, and wealth that maketh wounds about my heart. We'll change that prayer and choose a wiser part. Pray not to hold true sense for pain, nor rate thyself unhappy being too fortunate. Ay, mock me. Thou hast where to lay thine head but I go naked to mine exile. Tread thine own path, thou hast made it all to be. How? By seducing and forsaking thee? By those vile curses on the royal halls let loose. On thy house also, as chance falls, I am a living curse. Ah, oh, peace! Enough of these vain wars, I will no more thereof. If thou wilt take from all that I possess aid for these babes and thine own helplessness of exile, speak thy bidding. Here I stand full-willed to succor thee with stintless hand, and send my signet to old friends that dwell on foreign shores who will entreat thee well. Refuse, and thou shalt do a deed most vain, but 
cast thy rage away, and thou shalt gain much, and lose little for thine anger's sake. I will not seek thy friends. I will not take thy givings. Give them not. Fruits of a stem unholy bring no blessing after them. Now, God in heaven, be my witness. All my heart is willing in all ways to do its part for thee and for thy babes. But nothing good can please thee. In sheer savageness of mood thou drivest from thee every friend. Wherefore, I warrant thee, thy pains shall be the more. He goes slowly away. Go. Thou art weary for the new delight thou wooest. So long tarrying out of sight of her sweet chamber. Go, fulfil thy pride, O bridegroom. For it may be such a bride shall wait thee. Yea, God heareth me in this, As thine own heart shall sicken ere it kiss. Alas, the love that falleth like a flood, Strong-winged and transitory, Why praise ye him? What beareth he of good to man or glory? Yet love there is that moves in gentleness, Heart-filling, sweetest of all powers that bless. Loose not on me, O holder of man's heart, Thy golden quiver, Nor steep in poison of desire The dart that heals not ever. The pent hate of the word that cavilleth, The strife that hath no fill, where once was fondness, and the mad heart's breath for strange love panting still. O Cyprian, cast me not on these, but sift, keen-eyed, of love, the good and evil gift. Make innocence my friend, God's fairest star, yea, and abate not the rare sweet beat of bosoms without war, that love and hate not. Home of my heart, land of my own, cast me not, nay, for pity, out of my ways, helpless, alone, where the feet fail in the mire and stone. A woman without a city. Ah, not that! Better the end, the green grave cover me rather, if a break must come in the days I know, and the skies be changed and the earth be low, for the weariest road that man may wend is forth from the home of his father. Lo, we have seen, tis not a song sung, nor learned of another. For whom hast thou in thy direst wrong for comfort? Never a city strong to hide thee, never a brother. Ah, but the man, cursed be he, cursed beyond recover, Who openeth, shattering, seal by seal, a friend's clean heart, Then turns his heel, deaf unto love. Never in me friend shall he know, nor lover. While Medea is waiting downcast, seated upon her doorstep, there passes from the left a traveller with followers. As he catches sight of Medea, he stops. Have joy, Medea! Tis the homeliest word that old friends can greet with, and the best. Looking up, surprised. Oh, joy on thee too, Aegeus, gentle king of Athens! But whence comest thou journeying? From Delphi now, and the old in cabin stair. Where earth's heart speaks in song, what mayst thou there? Oh, prayed heaven for children, the same search alway. Children, oh God, art childless to this day. So God hath willed, childless and desolate. What word did Phoebus speak to change thy fate? Riddles, too hard for mortal man to read. Which I may hear. Assuredly, they need a rarer wit. How said he? Not to spill thy swine, nor seek for more. Until? Until I tread the hearthstone of my sires of yore. And what should bring thee here by Creon's shore? One piteous, knowest thou? High lord of Trozen. Ay, 
Pelops' son, a man most pure of sin. Him I would ask touching Apollo's will. Much use in God's ways hath he, and much skill. And long years back he was my battle friend, the truest air man had. Well, may God send good hap to thee, and grant all thy desire. But thou? Thy frame is wasted, and the fire dead in thine eyes. Aegeus, my husband is the falsest man in the world. What word is this? Say clearly what thus makes thy visage dim. He is false to me, who never injured him. What hath he done? Show all that I may see. Tain him a wife, a wife set over me to rule his house. He hath not dared to do. Jason, a thing so shameful. Ay, tis true. And those he loved of yore have no place now. Some passion sweepeth him, or is it thou he turns from? Passion. Passion to betray his dearest. Shame be his, so fallen away from honour. Passion to be near a throne, a king's heir. How? Who gives the bride? Say on. Creon, who o'er all Corinth standeth chief. Woman, thou hast indeed much cause for grief. Tis ruin. And they have cast me out as well. Who? Tis a new wrong this, and terrible. Creon the king, from every land and shore. And Jason suffers him? Oh, tis too sore. He loveth to bear bravely ills like these. But, Jesus, by thy beard, oh, by thy knees, I pray thee, and I give me for thine own, thy suppliant, Pity me, O oh, pity one so miserable! Thou never wilt stand there and see me cast out friendless to despair. Give me a home in Athens, by the fire of thine own hearth. O oh, so may thy desire of children be fulfilled of God, and thou die happy. Thou canst know not, even now thy prize is won. I, I will make of thee a childless man no more. The seed shall be, I swear it, sown. Such magic herbs I know. Woman, indeed, my heart goes forth to show this help to thee, first for religion's sake, then for thy promised hope, to heal my ache of childlessness. Tis this hath made mine whole life as a shadow, and starved out my soul. But thus it stands with me. Once make thy way to Attic earth, I, as in law I may, will keep thee and befriend. But in this land where Creon rules, I may not raise my hand to shelter thee. Move of thine own essay to seek my house. There thou shalt always stay, invalid, never to be seized again. But come thyself from Corinth. I would fain, even in foreign eyes, be always just. Tis well. Give me an oath wherein to trust, and all that man could ask thou hast granted me. Dost trust me not? Or what thing troubleth thee? I trust thee. But so many far and near do hate me. All King Peleus' house, and here Creon. Once bound by oaths and sanctities, thou canst not yield me up for such as these to drag from Athens. But a spoken word no more to bind thee, which no god hath heard. The embassies, methinks, would come and go, they are all friends to thee. Ah, me, I know thou wilt not list to me. So weak am I, and they fulfilled with gold and majesty. Methinks, tis a far foresight, this thine oath. Still, if thou so wilt have it, nothing loath I am to serve thee. Mine own hand is so the stronger. If I have this plea to show thy persecutors, and for thee withal, the bond more sure, on what god shall I call? Swear by the earth thou treadst, by the sun, sire of my sires, and all the gods as one. To do what thing or not do, make all plain. Never thyself to cast me out again, nor let another whatsoe'er his plea take me, while thou yet livest or art free. Never, so hear me earth and the great star of daylight, and all other gods that are. 
Oh, tis well. And if thou falter from thy vow. God's judgment on the godless break my brow. Go, go thy ways rejoicing. All is bright and clear before me. Go, and ere the night myself will follow, when the deed is done I purpose, and the end I thirst for won. Aya goes, and his train depart. Farewell, and Maya's guiding sun back lead thee to thy hearth and fire, Aegeus, and all the long desire that wasteth thee at last be won. Our eyes have seen thee as thou art, a gentle and a righteous heart. God, and God's justice, and ye blinding skies, at last the victory dawneth. Yea, mine eyes see, and my foot is on the mountain's brow. Mine enemies, <laughs> oh, mine enemies, now atonement cometh. Here at my worst hour a friend is found, a very port of power to save my shipwreck. Here will I make fast mine anchor, and escape them at the last in Athens' walled hill. But ere the end, tis meet I show thee all my counsel, friend. Take it, no tale to make men laugh withal. Straightway to Jason I will send some thrall to entreat him to my presence. Comes he here? Then with soft reasons will I feed his ear. How his will now is my will, how all things are well, touching this marriage-bed of kings for which I am betrayed, all wise and rare and profitable. Yet will I make one prayer, that my two children be no more exiled, but stay. O oh, not that I would leave a child here upon angry shores, till those have laughed to hate me, "'Tis that I will slay by craft the king's daughter. "'With gifts they shall be sent, "'gifts to the bride to spare their banishment, "'fine robings and a carcanet of gold, "'which raiment let her once but take "'and fold about her. "'A foul death shall that girl die, "'and all who touch her in her agony. "'Such poison shall they drink, "'my robe and wreath. How be it of that no more? I gnash my teeth, thinking on what a path my feet must tread thereafter. I shall lay those children dead, mine, whom no hand shall steal from me away. Then, leaving Jason childless, and the day as night above him, I will go my road to exile, flying, flying from the blood of these my best beloved, and having wrought all horror, so but one thing reach me not, the laugh of them that hate us. Let it come. What profits life to me? I have no home, no country now, nor shield from any wrong. That was my evil hour, when down the long halls of my father out I stole, my will chained by a Greek man's voice, who still, oh, still, if God yet live, shall all requited be. For never child of mine shall Jason see hereafter living, never child beget from his new bride, who this day, desolate even as she made me desolate, shall die shrieking amid my poisons. Names have I among your folk, one light, one weak of hand, an eastern dreamer, Nay, but with the brand of strange sons burnt, my hate by God above, a perilous thing and passing sweet, my love. For these it is that make life glorious. Since thou hast bared thy fell intent to us, I, loving thee, and helping in their need man's laws, adjure thee, dream not of this deed. There is no other way. I pardon thee thy littleness, who art not wronged like me. Thou canst not kill the fruit thy body bore. Yes, if the man I hate be pained the more. And thou made miserable, most miserable. Oh, let it come! All words of good or ill are wasted now. 
She claps her hands. The nurse comes out from the house. Ho! Woman! Get thee gone, and lead Lord Jason hither. There is none like thee to work me these high services. But speak no word of what my purpose is, as thou art faithful, thou, and bold to try all succours, and a woman even as I. The nurse departs. The sons of Erechtheus, the olden, whom high gods planted of yore, in an old land of heaven upholden, a proud land untrodden of war. They are hungered, and, lo, their desire, with wisdom is fed as with meat. In their skies is a shining of fire, a joy in the fall of their feet. And thither, with manifold dowers, from the north, from the hills, from the morn, the muses did gather their powers, that a child of the nine should be born. And harmony, sown as the flowers, grew gold in the acres of corn. And Cephasus, the fair flowing river, the Cyprian dipping her hand, hath drawn of his dew, and the shiver of her touch is as joy in the land, for her breathing in fragrance is written, and in music her path as she goes, and the cloud of her hair. It is litten with stars of the wind-woven rose, so fareth she ever and ever, and forth of her bosom is blown, as dews on the winds of the river, and hunger of passions unknown, strong loves of all godlike endeavor, whom wisdom shall throne on her throne. But Cephisus, the fair flowing, will he bear thee on his shore? Shall the land that succors all succor thee, who art foul among thy kind, with the tears of children blind? Dost thou see the red gash growing, thine own burden dost thou see? Every side, every way, lo, we kneel to thee and pray, by thy knees, by thy soul, O woman wild. One at least thou canst not slay, not thy child. Hast thou ice that thou shalt bind it to thy breast, and make thee dead to thy children, to thine own spirit's pain? When the hand knows what it dares, when thine eyes look into theirs, shalt thou keep by tears unblinded thy dividing of the slain? These be deeds not for thee, these be things that cannot be. Thy babes, though thine hardihood be fell, when they cling about thy knee, twill be well. Enter Jason. I answer to thy call. Though full of hate thou be, I yet will not so far abate my kindness for thee, nor refuse mine ear. Say in what new desire thou hast called me here. Jason, I pray thee, for my words but now spoken, forgive me. <sighs> My bad moods! Oh, thou at least wilt strive to bear with them. There be many old deeds of love twixt me and thee. Lo, I have reasoned with myself apart and chidden. Why must I be mad, O oh heart of mine, and raging against one whose word is wisdom, making me a thing abhorred to them that rule the land, and to mine own husband, who doth but that which, being done, will help us all, to wed a queen, and get young kings for brethren to my sons? And yet I rage alone, and cannot quit my rage. What aileth me, when God sends harbourage so simple? Have I not my children? Know I not we are but exiles, and must go beggared and friendless else? Thought upon thought so pressed me, till I knew myself full fraught with bitterness of heart and blinded eyes. So now, I give thee thanks, and hold thee wise to have caught this anchor for our aid. The fool was I, who should have been thy friend, thy tool, gone wooing with thee, stood at thy bedside, serving, and welcomed duteously thy bride. But— as we are, we are. I will not say mere evil. Women! 
Why must thou to-day turn strange, And make thee, like some evil thing, Childish to meet my childish passioning? See, I surrender, And confess that then I had bad thoughts, But now have turned again and found my wiser mind. <coughs> Ho, children, run quickly, Come hither out into the sun. The children come from the house, Followed by their attendant. And greet your father. Welcome him with us, And throw quite, quite away, as mother does, Your anger against one so dear. Our peace is made, And all the old bad war shall cease for ever. Go and take his hand. As the children go to Jason, She suddenly bursts into tears. The children quickly return to her. She recovers herself, smiling amid her tears. Oh, me! I am full of hidden horrors. Shall it be a long time more, my children, that ye live to reach to me those dear, dear arms? Forgive. I am so ready with my tears to-day, and full of dread. I sought to smooth away the long strife with your father. And lo, now, I have all drowned with tears this little brow. She wipes the child's face. O'er mine eyes, too, there stealeth a pale tear. Let the evil rest, O God, let it rest here. Woman, indeed I praise thee now, nor say ill of thine other hour. Tis nature's way. A woman needs must stir herself to wrath when work of marriage by so strange a path crosseth her lord. But thou, thine heart doth wend the happier road. Thou hast seen ere quite the end what choice must needs be stronger, which to do shows a wise-minded woman. And for you, children, your father never has forgot your needs. If God but help him, he hath wrought a strong deliverance for your weakness. Yea, I think you with your brethren yet one day shall be the mightiest voices in this land. Do you grow tall and strong? Your father's hand guideth all else. And what so power divine hath always helped him? Ah, may it be mine to see you yet in manhood, Stern of brow, strong-armed, Set high o'er those that hate me. How? Woman, thy face is turned. Thy cheek is swept with pallor of strange tears. Dost not accept gladly and of good will my benisons? Tis nothing, thinking of these little ones. Ah, take heart, then. I will guard them from all ill. I do take heart. Thy word I never will mistrust. Alas, a woman's bosom bears but woman's courage, A thing born for tears. What ails thee? All too sore thou weepest there. I was their mother. When I heard thy prayer of long life for them, There swept over me a horror, Wondering how these things shall be. But for the matter of my need, That thou should speak with me, Part I have said, and now will finish. Seeing it is the king's behest to cast me out from Corinth, I and best, far best for me, I know it, not to stay longer to trouble thee and those who sway the realm, being held to all their house a foe. Behold, I spread my sails, and meekly go to exile. But our children, could this land be still their home a while, could thine own hand but guide their boyhood? Seek the king, and pray his pity, That he bid thy children stay. He is hard to move. Yet surely twere well done. Bid her, for thy sake, for a daughter's boon. Well thought, her I can fashion to my mind. Surely. She is a woman like her kind. Yet I will aid thee in thy labour, I will send her gifts, the fairest gifts that lie in the hands of men, things of the days of old, fine robings and a carcanet of gold by the boy's hands. Go quick, some handmaiden, and fetch the raiment. A handmaid goes into the house. Ah, her cup shall then be filled indeed. What more should woman crave, being wed with thee, the bravest of the brave, and girt with raiment which of old the sire of all my house the sun gave, steeped in fire to his own fiery race? The handmaid has returned bearing the gifts. Come, children, lift with heed these caskets. Bear them as your gift to her, being bride and princess, and of right blessed. 
I think she will not hold them light. Fond woman, why wilt empty thus thine hand of treasure? Doth King Creon's castle stand in stint of raiment or in stint of gold? Keep these and make no gift. For if she hold Jason of any worth at all, I swear chattels like these will not weigh more with her. Oh, chide me not. Tis written, gifts persuade the gods in heaven, and gold is stronger made than words innumerable to bend men's ways. Fortune is hers. God maketh great her days, young and a crowned queen. And banishment for those two babes. I would not gold were spent, but life's blood ere that come. My children, go forth into those rich halls, and bowing low beseech your father's bride, whom I obey, ye be not of her mercy cast away exiled. And give the caskets, above all mark this, to none but her, to hold with all and keep. Go quick, and let your mother know soon the good tiding that she longs for. Go! She goes quickly into the house. Jason and the children with their attendant depart. Now I have no hope more of the children's living. No hope more. They are gone forth unto death. The bride, she taketh the poison of their giving. She taketh the bounden gold and openeth. And the crown, the crown she lifteth about her brow, Where the light brown curls are clustering. No hope now. O oh, sweet and cloudy gleam of the garments golden, The robe, it hath clasped her breast, And the crown her head. Then, then she decketh the bride, As a bride of olden, Story that goeth pale to the kiss of the dead, For the ring hath closed, And the portion of death is there. And she flieth not, But perisheth unaware. O oh, bridegroom, bridegroom of the kiss so cold, Art thou wed with princes? Art thou girt with gold? Who knowest not, suing for thy child's undoing, And on her thou lovest for a doom untold? How art thou fallen from thy place of old? O oh, mother, mother, what hast thou to reap? When the harvest cometh between wake and sleep, for a heart unslaken, for a troth forsaken, lo, babes that call thee from a bloody deep, and thy love returns not, get thee forth and weep. Enter the attendant with the two children. Medea comes out from the house. Mistress, these children from their banishment are spared. The royal bride hath mildly bent her hand to accept thy gifts, And all is now peace for the children. Ha! Huh, why standest thou confounded, When good fortune draweth near? O oh, God! This chimes not with the news I bear. O oh, God, have mercy! Is some word of wrath here hidden that I knew not of? And hath my hope to give thee joy so cheated me? Thou givest what thou givest, I blame not thee. Thy brows are all o'ercast, thine eyes are filled. For bitter need, old man, the gods have willed, And my own evil mind that this should come. Take heart, thy sons one day will bring thee home. Home? I have others to send home. Woe's me. Be patient. Many a mother before thee hath parted from her children. We poor things of men must needs endure what fortune brings. I will endure. Go thou within, and lay all ready that my sons may need to-day. The attendant goes into the house. O oh, children, children mine, and you have found a land and home, where leaving me discrowned and desolate, for ever will you stay, motherless children. And I go my way to other lands, an exile, ere you bring your fruit home, ere I see you prospering, or know your brides, or deck the bridal bed, all flowers, and lift your torches overhead. Oh, cursed be mine own hard heart! 
"'Twas all in vain, then, that I reared you up, so tall and fair. In vain I bore you, and was torn with those long pitiless pains when you were born. Oh, wondrous hopes my poor heart had in you! How you would tend me in mine age, and do the shroud about me with your own dear hands, when I lay cold, blessed in all the lands that knew us! And that gentle thought is dead. You go, and I live on, to eat the bread of long years, to myself most full of pain. And never— your dear eyes never again shall see your mother far away being thrown to other shapes of life. My babes, my own, why gaze ye so? What is it that ye see? And laugh with that last laughter. Woe is me, what shall I do? Women, my strength is gone gone like a dream since once I looked upon those shining faces. I can do it not. Oh, good-bye to all the thoughts that burned so hot aforetime. I will take them and hide them far, far from men's eyes. Why should I seek a war so blind, by these babes' wounds to sting again their father's heart, and win myself a pain twice deeper? Never! Never! I forget henceforward all I laboured for. And yet what is it with me? Would I be a thing mocked at, and leave mine enemies to sting unsmitten? It must be. O coward heart, ever to harbour such soft words! Depart out of my sight, ye twain! The children go in. And they whose eyes shall hold it sin to share my sacrifice, on their heads be it. My hand shall not swerve now. Oh, oh, thou wrath within me! Do not thou, do not! Down, down, thou tortured thing, and spare my children! They will dwell with us, I, there, far off, and give thee peace. Too late, too late! By all hell's living agonies of hate, they shall not take my little ones alive to make their mock with. Howsoe'er I strive, the thing is doomed, it shall not escape now from being. Ay, the crown is on the brow, and the robe girt, and in the robe that high queen dying. I know all. Yet, seeing that I must go so long a journey, and these twain a longer yet and darker, I would fain speak with them ere I go. A handmaid brings the children out again. Come, children, stand a little from me. There, reach out your hand, your right hand, so, to mother. And good-bye. She has kept them hitherto at arm's length, but at the touch of their hands her resolution breaks down, and she gathers them passionately into her arms. Oh, darling hand! Oh, darling mouth! And I, and royal mien and bright, brave faces clear! May you be blessed, but not here! What here was yours your father stole? Oh, God! The glow of cheek on cheek, the tender touch! And, oh, sweet scent of childhood! Go, go! <laughs> Am I blind? Mine eyes can see not when I look to find their places. I am broken by the wings of evil. Yea, I know to what bad things I go, but louder than all thought doth cry anger, which maketh man's worst misery. She follows the children into the house. My thoughts have roamed a cloudy land and heard a fierier music fall than woman's heart should stir with all. And yet some muse majestical, unknown, hath hold of woman's hand, seeking for wisdom, not in all. A feeble seed, a scattered band, thou yet shalt find in lonely places, 
not dead amongst us, nor our faces turned all way from the muse's call. And thus my thought would speak, that she, who ne'er hath borne a child nor known, is nearer to felicity. Unlit she goeth and alone, with little understanding what a child's touch means of joy or woe, and many toils she beareth not. But they within whose garden fair that gentle plant hath blown, they go deep written all their days with care to rear the children, to make fast their hold, to win them wealth, and then much darkness, if the seed at last bear fruit in good or evil men. And one thing at the end of all abideth, that which all men dread. The wealth is won, the limbs are bred to manhood, and the heart with all honest. And lo, where fortune smiled, some change, and what hath fallen? Hark, tis, tis death, death, slow winging to the dark, dark. And, and in his arms what was thy child. child. What, therefore, doth it bring of gain to man, whose cup stood full before, that God should send this one thing more, of hunger and of dread, a door set wide to every wind of pain. Medea comes out alone from the house. Friends, this long hour I wait on fortune's eyes, and strain my senses in a hot surmise what passeth on that hill. Ah! <gasps> even now there comes, tis one of Jason's men I trow. His wild perturbed breath doth warrant me the tidings of some strange calamity. Enter messenger. O oh, dire and ghastly deed! Get thee away, Medea. Fly, nor let behind thee stay one chariot's wing, one keel that sweeps the seas. And what hath chanced to cause such flights as these? The maiden princess lieth, and her sire the king, both murdered by thy poison fire. Oh, most happy tiding! which thy name prefers henceforth among my friends and well-wishers. What sayest thou? Woman, is thy mind within clear, and not raving? Thou art found in sin most bloody, wrought against the king's high head, and laughest at the tale, and hast no dread? I have words also that could answer well thy word. But take thine ease, good friend, and tell how died they, Hath it been a very foul death, prithee? That were comfort to my soul. When thy two children, hand in hand entwined, Came with their father, and passed on To find the new-made bridal rooms, Oh, we were glad, we thralls, Who ever loved thee well, And had grief in thy grief. And straight there passed a word from ear to ear, that thou and thy false lord had poured peace-offering upon wrath foregone. A right glad welcome gave we them, and one kissed the small hand, and one the shining hair. Myself, for very joy, I followed where the women's rooms are. There our mistress, she whom now we name so, thinking not to see thy little pair, with glad and eager brows sate waiting Jason. Then she saw, and slow shrouded her eyes, and backward turned again, sick that thy children should come near her. Then thy husband quick went forward to entreat the young maid's fitful wrath. Thou wilt not meet love's coming with unkindness. Nay, refrain thy suddenness, and turn thy face again, holding as friends all that to me are dear, thine husband, and accept these robes they bear as gifts, and beg thy father to unmake his doom of exile on them for my sake. When once she saw the raiment, she could still her joy no more, but gave him all his will, and almost ere the father and the two children were gone from out the room, she drew the flowered garments forth, and sate her down to her arraying, bound the golden crown through her long curls, and in a mirror fair arranged their separate clusters, 
smiling there at the dead self that faced her. Then aside she pushed her seat, and paced those chambers wide alone, her white foot poising delicately, so passing joyful in those gifts was she, and many a time would pause straight-limbed, and wheel her head to watch the long fold to her heel sweeping. And then came something strange. Her cheek seemed pale, and back with crooked steps and weak groping of arms she walked, and scarcely found her old seat that she fell not to the ground. Among the handmaids was a woman old and gray who deemed, I think, that Pan had hold upon her, or some spirit, and raised a keen awakening shout, till through her lips was seen a white foam crawling, and her eyeballs back twisted, and all her face dead pale for lack of life, and while that old dame called, the cry turned strangely to its opposite, to die sobbing. Oh, swiftly then one woman flew to seek her father's rooms, one for the new bridegroom, to tell the tale, and all the place was loud with hurrying feet. So long a space as a swift walker on a measured way would pace a furlong's course in, there she lay speechless, with veiled lids. Then wide her eyes she oped, and wildly as she strove to rise, shrieked, for two diverse waves upon her rolled of stabbing death. The carcanet of gold that gripped her brow was molten in a dire and wondrous river of devouring fire, and those fine robes, the gift thy children gave, God's mercy, everywhere did lap and lave the delicate flesh, till up she sprang and fled a fiery pillar shaking locks and head this way and that, seeking to cast the crown somewhere away. But like a thing nailed down, the burning gold held fast the anadem, and through her locks, the more she scattered them, came fire the fiercer, till to earth she fell, a thing save to her sire, scarce nameable, and strove no more. That cheek of royal mien, where was it, or the place where eyes had been? Only from crown and temples came faint blood shot through with fire. The very flesh, it stood out from the bones, as from a wounded pine the gum starts, where those gnawing poisons fine bit in the dark. A ghastly sight! And touch the dead we durst not. We had seen too much. But that poor father, knowing not, had sped swift to his daughter's room, and there the dead lay at his feet. He knelt, and groaning low, folded her in his arms and kissed her. O oh, unhappy child, what thing unnatural hath so hideously undone thee? Or what wrath of God's? to make this old gray sepulchre childless of thee. Would God but lay me there to die with thee, my daughter? So he cried, but after, when he stayed from tears, and tried to uplift his old bent frame, lo, in the folds of those fine robes, it held, as ivy holds, strangling among your laurel boughs, Oh, then a ghastly struggle came. Again, again upon his knee he writhed, but that dead breast clung still to his, till, wild like one possessed, he dragged himself half free, and lo, the live flesh parted, and he laid him down to strive no more with death, but perish, for the deep had risen above his soul. And there they sleep at last, the old proud father and the bride, even as his tears had craved it, side by side. For thee, oh, no word more, thyself will know how best to baffle vengeance. Long ago I looked upon man's days, and found a grey shadow, and this thing more I surely say, 
that those of all men who are counted wise, strong wits, devisers of great policies, do pay the bitterest toll. Since life began, hath there in God's eye stood one happy man? Fair days roll on, and bear more gifts or less of fortune, but to no man happiness. Exit Messenger. Wrath upon wrath, meseems, this day shall fall from God on Jason. He hath earned it all. O oh, miserable maiden, all my heart is torn for thee, so sudden to depart from thy king's chambers and the light above, to darkness, all for sake of Jason's love. Women, my mind is clear. I go to slay my children with all speed, and then away from hence. Not wait yet longer till they stand beneath another and an angrier hand to die. Yea, howsoe'er I shield them, die they must. And seeing that they must, tis I shall slay them, I, their mother, touched of none beside. O, oh, up, and get thine armour on, my heart! Why longer tarry we to win our crown of dire inevitable sin? Take up thy sword, O poor right hand of mine, thy sword, then onward to the thin-drawn line where life turns agony. Let there be naught of softness now, and keep thee from that thought, born of thy flesh, thine own beloved. Now for one brief day forget thy children. Thou shalt weep hereafter. Though thou slay them, yet sweet were they. I am sore unfortunate. She goes into the house. O earth, our mother, and thou all seer, arrowy crown of sunlight, man were now look down. O look down. Look upon one accursed, ere yet in blood she twine red hands, blood that is thine. O son, save her first. She is thy daughter still, of thine own golden line. Save her, or shall man spill the life divine? Give peace, O fire that diest not. Send thy spell to stay her yet, to lift her afar, afar. A tortured, changed spirit, a voice of hell wrought of old wrongs and war. Alas for the mother's pain, wasted! Alas the dear life that was born in vain! Woman, what makest thou here, thou from beyond the gate, where dim simple gates clash in the dark blue seas, the shores where death doth wait? Why hast thou taken on thee to make us desolate, this anger of misery and guilt of hate. For fierce are the smitings back of blood once shed where love hath been, God's wrath upon them that kill, and an anguished earth and the wonder of the dead haunting as music still. A cry is heard within. Hark, did ye hear? Heard ye the children's cry? O oh, miserable woman! O oh, abhorred! What shall I do? What is it? Keep me fast from mother! I know nothing! Brother! Oh, I think she means to kill us! Let me go! I will! Help! Help! And save them at the last! Yes, in God's name! Help quickly, ere we die! She has almost caught me now! She has a sword! Many of the women are now beating at the barred door to get in. Others are standing apart. Thou stone, thou thing of iron, wilt verily spill with thine hand that life, the vintage stored of thine own agony? A mother slew her babes in days of yore. One, only one, from dawn to eventide. I know. God maddened, whom the queen of heaven set frenzied, flying to the dark, and she cast her for sorrow to the wide salt sea, 
forth from those rooms of murder unforgiven, wild-footed from a white crag of the shore, and clasping still her children twain. She died. O oh, love of woman, charged with sorrow sore, what hast thou wrought upon us? What beside resteth to tremble for? Enter hurriedly Jason and attendants. Ye woman by this doorway clustering, speak! Is the doer of the ghastly thing yet here or fled? What hopeth she of flight? Shall the deep yawn to shield her? Shall the height send wings and hide her in the vaulted sky to work red murder on her lords and fly unrecompensed? But let her go. My care is but to save my children, not for her. Let them she wronged requite her as they may, I care not. Tis my sons I must some way save, ere the kinsmen of the dead can win from them the payment of their mother's sin. Unhappy man, indeed thou knowest not what dark place thou art come to. Else, God wot, Jason, no word like these could fall from thee. What is it? Ha! The woman would kill me! Thy sons are dead, slain by their mother's hand. How? Not the children. I, I scarce understand. O oh God, thou hast broken me! Think of those twain as things once fair, that ne'er shall bloom again. Where did she murder them? In that old room? Open, and thou shalt see thy children's doom. O oh, thralls! Unloose me yonder bars! Make more of speed! Wrench out the jointing of the door! And show my two-edged curse the children dead! The woman! All this sword upon her head! While the attendants are still battering at the door, Medea appears on the roof, standing on a chariot of winged dragons, in which are the children's bodies. What make ye at my gates? Why batter ye with brazen bars, seeking the dead and me who slew them? Peace! And thou, if aught of mine thou needest speak, though never touch of thine shall scathe me more. Out of his firmament my father's father, the high sun, hath sent this that shall save me from mine enemy's rage. Thou living hate, thou wife in every age abhorred, blood-red mother who didst kill my sons and make me as the dead! and still canst take the sunshine to thine eyes and smell the green earth, reeking from my den of hell. I curse thee! Now all mine eyes can see that then were blinded when from savagery of eastern chambers, from a cruel land to Greece, and home I gathered in my hand thee, thou incarnate curse, one that betrayed her home, her father, her... O oh God hath laid thy sins on me! I knew! I knew there lay a brother murdered on thy hearth that day when thy first footstep fell on Argo's hull. Argo, my own, my swift and beautiful, that was her first beginning. Then a wife I made her in my house. She bore to life children, and now for love, for chambering in men's arms, she has murdered them. A thing not one of all the maids of Greece, not one, have dreamed of, whom I spurned, and for mine own chose thee, a bride of hate to me and death, tigress, not woman, beast of wilder breath than Scylla shrieking o'er the Tuscan sea. Enough, no scorn of mine can reach to thee, such iron is o'er thy eyes. Out from my road, thou crime begetter, blind with children's blood, and let me weep alone the bitter tide that sweepeth Jason's days. No gentle bride to speak with more, no child to look upon whom once I reared. All, all forever gone. An easy answer had I to this swell of speech. But Zeus our father knoweth well, all I for thee hath wrought, and thou for me. So let it rest. This thing was not to be, that thou shouldst live a merry life, my bed forgotten and my heart uncomforted, thou nor thy princess, nor the king that planned thy marriage drive Medea from his land and suffer not. Call me what thing thou please, Tigris or Scylla from the Tuscan seas. My claws have gripped thine heart, and all things shine. 
Thou too hast grief. Thy pain is fierce as mine. I love the pain, so thou shalt laugh no more. Oh, what a womb of sin my children bore! Sons did ye perish for your father's shame. How, it was not my head that murdered them! T'was thy false wooings, t'was thy trampling pride. Thou hast said it, for thy lust of love they died. And love to women a slight thing should be? To women pure, all thy vile life to thee. Think of thy torment. They are dead, they are dead. No, quick, great God, quick curses round thy head. The gods know who began this work of woe. Thy heart and all its loathliness they know. Loathe on, but, oh, thy voice, it hurts me sore. Ay, and thine me, wouldst hear me then no more? How? Show me but the way, tis this I crave. Give me the dead to weep and make their grave. Never. Myself will lay them in a still green sepulchre, where Hera by the hill hath precinct holy, that no angry men may break their graves and cast them forth again to evil. So I lay on all this shore of Corinth the high feast for evermore and right, to purge them yearly of the stain of this poor blood. And I to Pallas plain I go, to dwell beside Pandian's son Aegeus. For thee, behold, death draweth on, evil and lonely like thine heart. The hands of thine old Argo, rotting where she stands, shall smite thine head in twain, and bitter be to the last end thy memories of me. She rises on the chariot, and is slowly borne away. May they that hear the weeping child blast thee, and they that walk in blood! Thy broken vows, thy friends beguiled, have shut for thee the ears of God. Go, thou art wet with children's tears! Go thou! and lay thy bride to sleep. Childless I go to weep and weep. Not yet. Age cometh, and long years. My sons, mine own. Not thine, but mine. Who slew them? Yes, to torture thee. Once let me kiss their lips, once twine mine arms and touch. Oh, woe is me. Wouldst love them and entreat? But now they were as nothing. At the last, O oh God, to touch that tender brow. Thy words upon the wind are cast. Thou, Zeus, wilt hear me. All is said for naught. I am but spurned away and trampled by this tigress, red with children's blood. Yet come what may, so far as thou hast granted, yea, so far as yet my strength may stand, I weep upon these dead and say their last farewell, and raise my hand to all the demons of the air and witness of these things. How she who slew them will not suffer me to gather up my babes, nor bear to earth their bodies, whom, O oh stone of women, would I never have known nor gotten to be slain by thee. He casts himself upon the earth. Great treasure halls hath the Zeus in heaven. From whence to man strange dooms be given, past hope or fear, and the end men look it for cometh not, and a path is there where no man thought, so hath it fallen here. End of section two. End of Medea by Eurydice.